Arctic Express on the way to the Bluegrass State. Temperatures may flirt with zero. We'll show you when that arrives coming up. While below freezing temperatures are concerning, plumbers have their eye on the middle of the week when wind chill will read below zero. This man's mother lost thousands of dollars in a scam that could target you next. How to protect your family coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening to you. Mild temperatures spoiled us this weekend. Bitter cold temperatures have returned now to the bluegrass. And a blast of Arctic air is moving in. We didn't even hit 30 degrees today. But the cold is just the beginning. Much more to come as Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here to explain. Yeah, we're tracking uh, not only the cold, guys, but the potential for a little light snow out there tonight into parts of the bluegrass state. That introduces the brutal air that is to come Wednesday and Thursday. A life first alert defender. It's a calm and a clean sweep if you're out traveling uh, for now across central and eastern Kentucky. And the majority of the region should stay snow free tonight, though some flakes are breaking out into parts of Indiana, Illinois. That's ahead of a clipper that is now working its way off to the east and southeast. That snow is falling in Arctic. Air, so you're maximizing the snow rates. You're going to be talking about a swath of three, four, five, six, seven inches of snow just to the north of the bluegrass state. The area I've highlighted here in the blue will be the prime corridor for heavy snow tonight. Now, some of that will clip the far northern parts of the bluegrass state. It's a very fine line that we're walking the closer you get to Interstate 64. Again, most of the stuff that falls tonight and tomorrow morning will be across the north. It is from then. Now we start to focus on the bitterly cold temperatures that will be coming our way. Negative numbers start to show up, not only, guys, with thermometers, but especially. Especially the wind chill numbers. We'll show you why that dips into the danger category when I come back in less than 15 minutes. All right, now with the return of that bitter cold weather, remember it could affect your home's plumbing. So don't forget to protect those water pipes from the dangerously cold temperatures. Mike Linden went to the expert, a plumber, on how to keep your water pipes in working order this winter. It's our top story at 5 30. After a weekend with abnormally warm temperatures, it's about to feel much more like winter over the next few days. While staying warm is crucial, so is making sure your pipes do the same. Anything you can do to keep the wind from blowing in under, uh, siding, make sure it's on good. Wind will freeze it quicker than just cold temperatures. While Willoughby says that freezing cold temperatures are concerning, it's very concerning when wind chill readings are close to or below zero because it's at that point that major damage could arise. Temperature and wind chill readings in the single digits can cause exposed pipes to expand and crack if left unattended. Even minor damage to pipes could cost upwards of $200 to repair but can be avoided for only a few dollars. There's something like this simple pipe wrap that you can get to put around pipes. It's a foam insulation that that helps prevent the pipes from freezing by keeping the cold air away from the outside surface of the pipe. In some cases, you may not even detect a problem until it's too late. The problem surfaces when it starts to thaw out because the damage has been done when the, when the uh, pipe freezes, it expands and it might not leak right away, but as it starts to thaw out, that's when you see the problem. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Miller says before attempting to thaw a frozen pipe with a hair dryer, for example, to turn off the main shutoff valve to avoid any more damage. Well, as these temperatures continue to drop, car mechanics say now is the time to get your vehicle winterized. The mechanics at Auto Tech Services in Lexington tell us there are three things to be aware of when winterizing your car. First, check your battery. Cold weather can make them fail. Make sure your cooling system doesn't have more water than coolant. It may cause the engine to freeze. And finally, check your tire pressure. Low temps could equal low tires. The important thing is, is when traveling or driving, you know, make sure you have gas, cell phone charger, emergency, you know, travel kit, blankets, just in case if you slide off the road, you have something to keep you warm. You can let the car, you know, keep you warm. And the mechanics at Auto Tech Service say if you have not had your car winterized by now, have someone look at it before it gets too late. A high speed chase ended without an arrest. A police chief in Mercer County tried to pull over a burglary suspect, but the man just took off. We're told the chase became dangerous, hitting speeds of 90 miles an hour. Sean Moody talked to the Bergen police chief on the investigation. It's new at 5 30. 
The Bergen police chief says he tried to pull a suspect over here in Moore Lane along Bergen Road, but he says the men wouldn't stop. He says they went on a chase. It speeds up to 90 miles an hour nearly all the way into Harrodsburg. Bergen Police Chief Jim Caldwell says he'd been looking into a report of a burglary. As part of the investigation, he says he tried to pull over a car along Highway 152 around 9 o'clock last night. Instead of stopping, he says that car took off. We're actually driving toward Harrisburg on 152 at about 90 miles an hour. It ran the red light at 90 miles an hour across the four lane highway, at which point I decided that the uh, pursuit was getting too dangerous. He says a deputy found the car abandoned not long after. They say Thomas Combs had been driving the car. And we went to the residence where he was staying at, which is actually right next door to the residence that was burglarized. Uh, served a search warrant last night, and we were able to recover most of the jewelry that was taken. There's a couple of gifts you received from her children, you know, pendants. Caldwell said he went back to the burglary victim's apartment around 11 o'clock to show them what he'd found. Uh, they were ecstatic. Uh, you know, they're, they're little old folks, and, and bless their hearts, they're not used to somebody knocking on their door at 11 o'clock at night. But when I told them why I was knocking on their door at 11 o'clock at night, they were very happy to see me. He says there was also some jewelry that wasn't theirs. He believes people may not realize they've had these items stolen. Hopefully somebody will watch this newscast and see and say, hey, that's, that's, that's my lighter, that's my stuff. And Caldwell says he hopes to be able to return that jewelry to the owners soon. In Mercer County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Police say the owners of the apartment complex are offering a $500 reward for information leading to Combs' arrest. A father is in jail accused of shooting and killing his son. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 starts in Harlan County. That's where state police say Bernard Rice was arguing with his 51-year-old son Tommy late Saturday night. Troopers believe that during the argument, Bernard Rice grabbed a gun and shot Tommy once in the head. Neighbors tell us that Bernard Rice was always helping his son out, and that the father and son often helped out the neighborhood. I admit to visit him there. Even before this happened, but I put it off and didn't do it, and that made it me a little mean on myself for not visiting him. And that county by county story out of Perry County there, Bernard Ray Rice faces a manslaughter charge. He was scheduled for an arraignment at 2 today. In Laurel County, an 8 year old boy is recovering today after a bad crash this weekend. A crash happened yesterday afternoon on Lagno Road, north of London. The sheriff's office says 21 year old Jimmy Henson lost control of his truck, ran off the road, and hit a tree. Deputies say Henson and his 8 year old passenger were both airlifted to UK hospital with serious injuries. And in Harlan County, six people face charges after police say they were making meth in a hotel room. State police say they arrested all six people Friday at the Comfort Inn in Harlan. Troopers found Coleman fuel, lithium batteries, liquid fire, and other items typically used to manufacture meth. All six face several drug charges. They've been booked into the Harlan County Detention Center. It is one of the most popular scams affecting the elderly. Con men claiming that you have won the lottery, but to collect your winnings, you need to pay fees up front. It's very frustrating for family members like the man you're about to meet. I get angry, but you, I can't really show it because I don't think she understands what she's doing. Robert DeFabio is talking about his mother and the fact that she's lost thousands of dollars in savings to a lottery scam. I'm still in the process of trying to figure out a way to make her understand. And it's kind of, it's hard because she's, she's home during the day and I'm working. So I can't, you know, babysit her all the time. Despite several interventions by family members and postal inspectors, his mother still is compelled to send money to the fraudsters calling her on the phone. She thinks she's going to get the big payday, I guess. And, and I guess she just keeps trying. You know, thinking that someday it's going to come, and, and it never comes, of course. They're very convincing. They're very persistent. Uh, while we were at the victim's house, uh, three calls came in while we were there for the half an hour. Initially, she was asked to pay the taxes on a multi-million dollar jackpot. Inspectors can tell this victim has lost between $4,000 and $5,000. The family fears it is much more since they only just discovered the scam. My uh, mailbox is full, mostly, every day of the week. And I'll read them. and. They'll range from a new car to $7 million, $1.2 million. There's always varying amounts, but it's always, it's always the same people. An astute postal worker uncovered the scam. The postal clerk in this case actually recognized the victim and said she was in here yesterday and she's back in here again. 
When inspectors asked the woman if they could open the letter she was sending, they found a check inside. He could tell she was a little confused. Sadly, older Americans are the most popular targets for these schemes. Inspectors encourage families to be astute and monitor elderly family members and their finances. The other thing to do uh, would be to monitor all your bank accounts, credit card information, um, check with the credit bureaus. And we can't say it enough. Just remember that no legitimate lottery will ever ask you for taxes or fees up front. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. A Kentucky congressman says he will not be supporting John Boehner tomorrow when the time comes to vote for a House speaker. And Senator Mitch McConnell explains his goals for the new Congress. Bill Bryant has the details in the bottom line. Good evening. Northern Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey is among the conservative Republicans announcing he will not support House Speaker John Boehner for another term as Speaker when the vote is taken tomorrow. Massey calls the current House leadership under Boehner, quote, a significant source of dysfunction. Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert of Texas has launched what many consider to be a long shot bid to oust Boehner. Florida's Congressman Ted Yoho says he would also serve as Speaker if members want a new leader. It comes as Republican. Republicans are set to have their largest majority in the House since the Great Depression. Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell reaches his lifelong dream of becoming Senate Majority Leader tomorrow. A few years ago, he said his top priority was making Barack Obama a one term president. But Obama was re elected in 2012, and McConnell just won re election to a sixth term in the Senate. So the senator says the two need to work together and get some things done. Both of us came up short. I had hoped to make him a one-term president, and he had hoped to defeat me last fall. Uh, I think what the American people are saying is they want us both to still be here. They want us to look for things to agree on and see if we can make some progress for the country. The Republicans add to their House majority and take over a Senate majority at a time when Congress's approval rating has been around 15 percent. Fayette County Prosecutor Ray Larson ate some cake today to mark 30 years as Commonwealth's attorney. That's his Facebook page. Known for tough and sometimes controversial stands on crime, Larson has a national profile as one of the country's longest serving DAs. Kentucky lawmakers arrive in Frankfurt tomorrow to begin the 2015 legislative session. Among the items up for consideration, allowing cities to enact temporary local sales taxes, a statewide smoking ban, and a bill that would address dating violence. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Well, a big donation for God's Pantry Food Bank here in Lexington. Very generous today. Green Bean Delivery dropped off 2,500 pounds of fresh produce to the food bank. The food came from a fun drive with WUKY last month. Green Bean Delivery matched every thousand dollars the radio station raised with one hundred dollars of fresh produce. Fresh produce is logistically the most difficult food that we could distribute, but it's also the healthiest option that we can distribute. And we're not interested in simply filling bellies. We want to provide the most nutritious food we possibly can to people to hungry families in Kentucky. WUKY ended up raising more than $31,000 during its four day fund drive last month, which resulted in 2,500 pounds of fresh produce. Now